why not? Uh, so, because it's the start, well, we just ended our last series, Certain, uh, the adults are going to be starting a brand new series as well. However, we're going to be doing a little bit different. They're going to be working on a series called Better Together, which is talking about um, our church community, but it's, it's a little... It's a little different for us. So we're going to kind of look at a different approach about it. And we're going to look over the next four weeks, so this week and the following three weeks after that, we are going to be looking at something new together. So if you look with me for a minute, there's going to be a couple pictures pop up, and I want you to tell me what they are. First, can you tell me what this is? It's a banana. Right. Okay, what about this one? It's an apple. Excellent. What about this? It's a coconut. Awesome. One more. What is this one? A watermelon. Great. Now, can anyone tell me what all of these have in common? They are all fruit. Yes. Excellent. That's what we're going to talk about for the next four weeks. We are going, not necessarily bananas and apples, but we are going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit. There are nine fruit of the Spirit all together, and every week we're going to review the main Bible verse, the key verse that we're going to be looking at, and it is found in Galatians. Galatians is the ninth, ninth book of the New Testament. Sorry, I had to make sure my fact was right there. Uh, it is the ninth book in the New Testament, okay? So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, we get Galatians. We are going to be going to chapter 5, and we're going to go down to verses 22 and 23, where it says, and let's read it all together, because we're going to be doing this one every week, okay? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Today we're going to talk about the first three. So we're going to be breaking them down into groups. Today we're going to talk about the first three, which are love, joy, and peace. So today's going to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to give you a heads up already. But to work it all out, that's just the best way to get make sure we get them all in in these four weeks. So Love, joy, peace. We've all experienced love to some capacity. Right? We have. It's, we, we do. It's just how humans relate. You love your parents. Your parents love you. And your siblings. Maybe you have a dog or a cat or even a fish or a turtle. Whatever your pet may be. I'm sure you love your pet. The Bible is full of love examples. And actually, the definition of love is an intense feeling of deep affection. So the Bible says a lot about love. From Jesus loving us, to us loving others, and to us loving ourselves. A couple examples that we're going to go over. The first one is very well known. We're going to look at John 3.16. If you know it, say it with me. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that anyone who believes in him will never die but have eternal life. That's God showing his love for us and everyone else. We're going to go a little bit further. Ten chapters later, we're going to go to John 13, verse 34. And it says, love one another. As I have loved you, you too must love one another. In Matthew, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. We just covered all of those different areas that we gave an example of. Jesus loving us, us loving one another, and us loving ourselves. That's a lot. Jesus tells us to love our friends and our families, and God above all else. Love also has characteristics. There are different things that build the foundation to love. In 1 Corinthians, we learn about everything that love is and how to love. 
We're going to go to chapter 13, and we're going to start reading. It's a little bit longer, but this is what it says, starting in verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. This spells it right out. Love is kind, and, and it's, about, it's not about us. When we love, it's not about how we feel. It's about how we treat others. Because in that verse it says that it's not self-seeking, which means it doesn't, it's not to make us look better. It's not to make us show, oh, I loved, I, I'm going to be nice to this person, so I'm a, I'm a good person. That's not what it's about. Love is something that comes deep from within, and it is usually natural, a natural expression, and along with it comes kindness. And that is, kindness is such an easy thing to do. We're going to talk about that another week. Corinthian, it explains in Corinthians that it brings great joy, which happens to be our next word. Joy is an emotion of pleasure and happiness. In Psalms, the book of Psalms, it talks about joy and being joyful. 57 times just in the book of Psalms that's a lot in Psalm 28 7 it says the Lord is my strength and my shield my heart trusts in him and he helps me my heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him we're gonna go a little bit further in Psalm 67 it says may the nations be glad and sing for joy a lot of these verses talk about that are in the Bible talk about singing joyfully or praising God joyfully and presenting joy to the Lord. And it also talks about how our joy comes from God. Okay? So we're going to look at a couple, uh, we're going to look at an example of that. In 1 Thessalonians, which is in the New Testament, it says that you, the Lord, is our glory and joy. So that's an example of our happiness coming from God. Love, joy, and peace, our last one of the day. Peace means freedom from disturbance or tranquility. It is a state or period in which there is no war or war has ended. Here at Wainfleet, we promote peace. We would, we would call ourselves peacemakers. We don't go out and we don't we don't condone that we don't we it's not okay and we know it's not okay no one wants war no one wants to see people lose people they love because people are fighting that's not what we're about in Luke 10 it says if someone who promotes peace is there your peace God's peace will rest on them I love this coming one this is another verse that's I want you to read I want you to listen really well Romans 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's break this one down. When we talk about peace, and we, when we were talking about it, when I first explained it, we were talking about between other people, fighting and war. That's between person to person. This verse in Romans talks about peace in ourselves. And sometimes we, we, we wrestle and we think about things that we may have done that are bad and things that, you know, make us feel guilty. Well, this verse is saying that when we come to Jesus and we, we ask for forgiveness for maybe, for maybe hitting someone or for maybe saying a mean thing to, to your friend at school, if we ask Jesus to forgive us and we change how we're going to talk or how we're going to act around that person or in general, 
we don't have to we don't have to keep thinking about that anymore we don't have to keep going oh but I hit that person oh I said some pretty mean words to that person I hope they're gonna forgive me or I don't know if I can be around them because I've been so mean if you try to make it right you don't have to worry about that and you can rest that Jesus has forgiven you I love that I I always feel guilty even if it's an accident like if I if I drop someone's coffee I anything or if I step on someone's toe by accident I feel so bad I feel so bad and I keep apologizing I'm like I'm so sorry I did that I'm so 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 sorry and they're like it's okay it's okay we're good but then you keep going oh I'm just so sorry you don't have to do that does that make sense I hope that that kind of made more sense but I love how we can look at it and see that it's not just about people to people but it's it's also about having peace with ourselves because Jesus says we can. <laughs> I love that. And I hope that that teaches you a little bit about what peace is. Because peace is a stillness. It's resting. It's, it's not worrying. It's peace. <laughs> it's being cool. And when we're, when we're cool with God and Jesus, then it's all good. That makes me feel good. So, love, joy, peace. Big old check mark. We got those ones down. Next week, we're going to look at the next two, which is patience and kindness. Now, I'm going to tell you already. Patience is not one of my strong suits. So we're going to talk we're going to talk really good about that. I'm going to pray with you guys and that's it for this week. So here we go. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and thank you that um, we can enjoy this beautiful fall weather and even though it's getting a little chilly, thank you for the change of the year that we get to see and we get to be part of. I ask that you keep us all safe and healthy and continue to allow us to grow in you and um, how we can start, sh how we can show um, these fruits of the spirit and how we can love better and we can be joyful and we can be joyful in you and we can have peace in ourselves and with others. I pray that you remind us this week how we can go about doing that and how we can continue to strengthen those areas in our lives. And we thank you and we love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, patience and kindness next week. Don't be late. Bye.